Yeah, um, tonight was crazy. It was a great game, a great win for us. Uh, we went out there and had fun. Everybody had their brothers' backs out there. And, you know, we know it's going to be frustration every game, but, you know, we got to get the job done and just have fun doing it. Okay, keep going. Let's keep going. like two minutes. Oh, okay. So, um, talk about who played well, the different changes in the game. So, yeah, it was a lot of different. The coach was like, the coach was fired. <laughs> coach Pope, great. <laughs> nice. That's not convincing at all. Keep going. But, um, yeah, so tonight they threw a lot of different looks at us. You know, one last game we was able to get downhill more. This game it was a lot of, uh, you know, perimeter shots and everything, so having to adjust. But um, I feel like we did pretty good just maneuvering throughout it. And um, what I got to say about this Foose, man? Six for six on his birthday? That's great. That's crazy. Uh, I could go across the line, though. Caleb, AB, T, Jaron, Trev. I could go across the line. They all play really, uh, really well. And, you know, we can't do it without them. I got to keep going. That was awesome. <laughs> that was great. And then you say, I'll, I'll open up for questions. I'll open up for questions. Well, that's that's team, man. That's the student section, baby. That is uh, that's the magic of playing in this building, and um, they've been great for us all year. And it's hard, like it's hard. I mean, you got, I don't know what the real number is. I always say like sixty thousand, but but it's probably only six thousand students, and they're like uh, they're on it, and they care, and they take pride in it. And um, I'm telling you, it's just. I mean, where is there a basketball environment with a student session like that? I just don't – I don't think there is one. And so they had a huge impact on the game. We knew – you know, we went through a little stretch in the second half where we kind of had three fouls where you're, you, you know, you're just um, rubbing your head a little bit and uh, they were a little inexplicable and our student section bailed us out. It's pretty fun, right? Well, I'm going to tell you this. This is a good team. You know, you think about, uh, you know, they, they, they went up huge on uh, San Diego at San Diego, and then it just the game just kind of weirdly in a weird way on the road got away from like it does on the road. It's hard to win on the road. And then they went, they, they went on the road and they blitz Pepperdine. And then uh, they're playing at LMU, and, and like two minutes before the game, they make a game-time decision that, that, uh, that uh, Mo can't play. And, you know, they're starting three, who clearly you saw how effective he is tonight. He's a real problem. And so this team is really good. Shante is a great coach. Uh, this is a good young team. Uh, and when they shoot it like they shot it tonight, I mean, they really shot it tonight, uh, they're dangerous. They can do some damage in this league. And so we knew that. Um, you know, every team in this league is good. And um, we, 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 you know, we felt like Foos had a real advantage. The one thing that they've shown is that they'll allow you to get every post catch you want, and then they're just going to really pack it in. They're not going to sell out to try and take away catches. They're just going to pack it in after. And it, for a freshman, Foos was unbelievable at managing all the bodies in there. And Atiki was unbelievable Atiki, at managing right. all the bodies in there. And his couple post catches, I was super proud of him. And, um, and then, you know, our goal tonight was to try and touch the paint. Like, we had to find a way to touch the paint. They're packing in. They switched a lot of ball screens. You know, they're bringing a lot of people, so it's hard to get downhill. So we had to find ways to touch the paint. And I thought Alex and Tijon were unbelievable playing off two feet and, and, and find and send for three. That was kind of the game plan. Just everyone get to the paint and then pass the ball to Seneca so we get big at three. <laughs> Yeah, and it's um, we're growing, right? Uh, Tijon was unbelievable in the first half. Sen was unbelievable in the first half. How about these guys finishing the half? Like, they got some magic. This team has some magic. It has nothing to do with coaching either. These are just smart, high IQ, feel the, the, the importance of the moment. But, man, we finished the half, the last minute of the half. Uh, every game here has been really special for us, and they did it again. Um, so, you know, it's all around all good. Uh, it felt great. I, I passed up one earlier, and they just all came to me and just told me to keep shooting. Like, you know, miss a couple. We believe in you just to keep shooting and everything. So to be able to give them that spark and just knowing that they believe in me and knowing that I was able to, you know, fulfill what they were asking me to do, it felt great. Sen ran into that first charge, and he was like, okay, fine. I'm just going to shoot threes. No, nah, definitely. It was really <laughs> effective. It was really effective. Turkey, 
you hit that three right before the half, you started celebrating with some fans on the baseline uh, or the court side. Let's talk about the emotion from that game to break down. Uh, it was just great. And, you know, the fan base here is ridiculous. So, you know, I had two early fouls, sat most of the first, you know, how, it's, uh, how it goes. But um, they were just telling me, shoot, I hit the one before that. They was come, when T-John came down and they double teamed him, all the fans were like, send, send, send. They was like, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. So I shot it and turned around, and then the kids just put his hand out. So it just, it was great to celebrate with them. They great. Seneca, for you, going, going back to like Thursday, I guess, how, how much more comfortable do you feel in your role just this week? What has it meant to you for, for your role? Um, you know, just trying to fill uh, feel void. I would say that's my main thing. So whether it's scoring, defending, rebounding, whatever I could do to help this team win, I'm willing to do it. So uh, that's say that's really about it. You know, the magic about Seneca right now is he he had a great offensive night making shots, right? And um, he had a great playmaking uh, night. Did we play two nights ago? Yep. Yes, he did. And. Um, but like, what's super impressive, and the reason why, you know, there's 11 minutes left, and he's 12 minutes left, he picks up his third foul. I'm like, I got to get him out of this game because, like, he's getting to a spot where I'm like, I need him in in the game, like in the meat of the game. I need to be able to have him, um, and it's because his defensive numbers are off the charts right now for us. He's really good. He's really making a huge impact. Gideon is. Spencer Johnson is making a huge impact defensively, and and starting against a team that was red hot to start this game. I mean, did they miss a shot in the first ten minutes? Yeah, maybe not. We feel like and um, and so these guys coming off the bench and and taking a stand is so important. Our team they change us defensively, and they did for sure tonight. Sen was awesome. Coach, how valuable. It, it's really important because he, we've talked about this since the beginning of the season. Like, mm -hmm. we've had rough patches. Yeah. Yes. We did. We did. And um, it's kind of like just saying, hey, just like you're, it's going to work. It's going to fit. Like, it's just, it's, it's just is an adjustment period, not just for Sen, but for me also, learning each other. And, um, and he's been so consistent defensively, minus the foul on the three-point shot, but Man. so <laughs> consistent defensively that, you know, when guys play that way, you can just kind of, like, leave them out there. And, um, and, and we know that his offensive skill set is unique to us. And, I mean, it, it matters. Like, you know, you, everybody saw Tiki take another step tonight. And we're seeing Foo score every single night. And Caleb Lohner took a step forward tonight. And Seneca Knight took a real step forward tonight. And, and that's, that's super important for our team to reach its ceiling. It's fun. It's fun to watch guys grow, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I wonder why I ever take him out of the game. I mean, really, like he just is—he just is so—he's so impactful on the court, and um, he's not putting up big numbers, but he's taking care of the ball. He's, he's a good ball mover right now, and he'll he'll bang threes when he needs to, and he's really good downhill, getting to a finish. But his 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 work defensively is just like it's such a gift to our team because he just goes out there and disrupts everything. And he's he's just he's terrific. So he's. You know, he's, he's the, every single game I feel like he's the unsung hero. And um, he's doing an incredible job for us. Coach, what does it mean for you guys to, to not only get the chance to see the halftime, you know they were honoring the 1981 BYU basketball team. Right? Yeah. What, what, what does that mean to you, and how do you turn that into your program? So a bunch of the guys came to shoot around today, and then we had a dinner uh, for, for the coaches and the, and the team uh, before that I – I never break my pregame protocol ever, but I did just to go see them for five minutes. Um, it is, you know, we take it uh, we take it for granted a little bit, I think. And let me explain what I mean. Like we walk into this building, and there's fifteen thousand people, and this the greatest, most accomplished team to ever compete for BYU. All these 15,000 people and those people have put aside their life for a couple hours to come support these guys and watch these guys. And that's super humbling. And when I walked into that dinner tonight and talked to those guys for two minutes, that's how I really felt. I felt super humbled um, because these are, these are great men and great families, great coaches and players that did something that has never been replicated. Like, you guys know how much we love history. And these guys have done something that's never been done here. And um, to think that they're willing to walk in this gym and watch us fight and, and support us is, is incredible. 
And um, we also remember every single day, we talk about it all the time, we get to walk in and have 15,000, 18,000, 17,000 people in this building because those guys built this incredible fan base. When they were playing, it was 23 every single night, right? They built this like generational love for this university. So the reason Sen gets to bang a three and a youngster is losing his mind on the front row and he gets to run down the court and, and, and give him five, which is kind of like, a, like one of those magical dream scenarios you dream about growing up is because of what those guys did. I mean, those guys essentially built this building. And um, so I think a lot of humility and a lot of gratitude uh, and then a lot of hunger. My last comment to them was like, we got to take you guys off the board, man. It's the most accomplished team. We got to find a way to do it somehow. So it was really special. It's really special. Coach, how valuable is it to have a guy like Danny Ainge who's so synonymous with the game of basketball to still be invested and, and be a supporter for BYU? Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, you know, you think about it. Like, in my locker room after the game, I got Greg Kite. Greg Kite talking to Atiki Ali Atiki. Greg Kite, Elite Eight here, four NBA championships, 12, 13, 14 years in the NBA. Like, uh, you know, same size guys, just a little bit of weight difference right now. And, and who gets that, right? When you, I really believe this, like the best, the very best programs in college basketball, those guys are invested and engaged. And so it's pretty special, man. We, we should feel like a family, and, and we're, we're really working to get there. So have you ever heard of any of those guys? What is that? Have you ever heard of any of those guys that were, that were on that team, Danny Ainge? And of course, Danny Ainge. Ainge. I heard of him before. And, uh, Greg Kite, uh, they they legend, and they respect the field playing basketball. We got to meet Steve Trumbo today, which Stan doesn't know what a legend he is, but he does know Steve the, the Trumbo looks big, right? He, he looked big. Yeah. Uh, actually, we were talking about a comparison with him and Foos um, with some, some longtime fans who were like, man, sometimes Foos reminds me because cause Trumbo got every single rebound, right? And um, it's fun having those guys around. Coach, Coach mentioned Tiki. Um, how much of the game changes? You got the big block last game. You got one big run. You got three blocks tonight. He's really, he's fun, yes. He's fun. He's very impactful, especially, you know, sometimes you get beat downhill and just you're just watching it. You're just watching the block. You just know it's about to happen. But he's been improving every single game. He comes out and works hard every single day, and he's really trying to get it. And it's just – it's enjoyable to play with him. Our guys get so energized that by the I'm a little scared that our guys are going to start letting dudes drive down the lane just because they want to watch it. He's like, okay, I can get on the break right now. I'm going to let him go by me. <laughs> Cherry pick. He going to clean up the glass and let's go. <laughs> Don't do that. We can't start doing that. Coach, obviously, um, you know, Danny Ainge is the CEO of Jazz now. He's here <clears> locally. <throat> just kind of curious, what is your relationship like with him? How much do you go to him just for basketball stuff or, or advice, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, all these guys. Like, um, you know, it's, it's funny because it's we're trying to tap into all of – we have like Roger Reed was here and Frank Arnold was here. I mean, I've had multiple meetings with both those coaches, with Coach Rose, with Coach Cleveland, meetings where we sit down and do X's and O's. They'll bring in play sheets and like we'll talk about it. Same with Danny. Like, um, you know, Danny's been super generous. Just, you know, it's not like really detailed specific to BYU, but just like exploring the game. What I, what I love talking to Danny about is just the trends and the direction of the game because he's kind of like the front vanguard and then – like, whoever can get close to that front is actually going to win, right? And so um, all those guys have been so generous. Like I said, Greg was sitting in the locker room talking to Atiki. I mean, Gr Greg can share things with Atiki that I can't, that he just knows, right? And so it's super, it's super impactful. One more question. Just curious what the, the pregame routine has been for you that, that you went break. I don't know. That, that's a little bit, that's a little bit, little, it's a little bit sacred right there. <laughs> We're very much routine. Like, San has just been here for 20, 21? 20 games, 21 games. Mm -hmm. He's just been here for 21 games. And he's already like, man, we do the same thing every shoot around. Coach says exactly the same words at exactly the same time. Our pregame speech is exactly the same speech <laughs> every single time. So we're, we're very much in a routine. We believe in it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Super fun. Thanks for being here, guys. Good job. Way to go, Coach. Very nice.